Welcome to day three of revision. So I, I was having a chat with my English teacher and I got some really interesting insight here. You guys really are going to want to pay attention to today's stream because I have insider info. Well, not really, but I have a kind of interesting little analysis now of the poetry component of English language paper two. So, language, uh, sorry, not language, literature. Literature, paper two, is two hours and 15 minutes long. Um, and it is split into three sections. You have your Lord of the Flies, or An Inspector Calls. Um, you then also have Poetry, and Unseen poetry. Um, now, I would argue that the most difficult section is the poetry, because you could be given any poem, right? You could be given Charge of the Light Brigade, and you have to compare that poem to another similar one, which means you quite literally have to remember a lot of the quotes. Unseen poetry we haven't done yet. She has not explained a single bit of how, of how to do it, but apparently there's a good writing frame to use, something like that. And Lord of the Flies uh, or an Inspector Calls. I don't know Inspector Calls at all. I obviously do Lord of the Flies, but from what I can gauge, both of them are kind of similar. They're very um, kind of obvious. Lord of the Flies is, I think, because I know the text so well, it is so obvious now. Um, things like, um, you know, the symbolism, how different characters represent what the author was intending to do. It's kind of all pieced together now, and I, I feel like I can visualise a lot of, of the characters in deeper ways now. Only problem is, the quotes for Lord of the Flies, you're not given an extract. So meanwhile, with Macbeth and Christmas Carol, where you are literally given an extract to fall back on, if, if all else fails, you are given an, an, a piece of the text to look at. Um, you're not given that with Lord of the Flies, which means you need to know a lot of quotes about a lot of different things. I would say three quotes for each character, and maybe five for the themes, something like that. So like, yeah. Anyways, we're not doing Lord of the Flies today, or I might do some later, but we're doing poetry, because I personally think this is the most difficult section. Now, the insider, insider information that I got from Miss Owen is that, number one, it is very unlikely that we will get tissue as our poem, because she said that the poem was added into the book purely as a stretch challenge, purely for those higher level students looking to get a better grade, which actually means that some schools might not even do it. And if, that, if that's the case, they can't do tissue. And there you go. So guys, it is insanely unlikely that we, we will have to analyze tissue. Um, but what we may have to analyze are the nature poems, because I think this is it. It was power, war, power, war, war, power. This is how it's been in the past exams. It's the only themes that have been in the past poetry exams, um, have been either power poems or war poems. Um, in fact, I think Charge of the Light Brigade was on twice, or um, one of the other similar poems. Which means it is almost very likely that we will have to do a poem on nature. So what are the nature poems? Um, well, let me, let me go, I guess. So what are the nature poems in Power and Conflict? Just want to make sure you guys can see. I'll go and just say. Uh, so, what are the nature poems? Well, some of them poems are a little more abstract in terms of nature, 
But the most important and I think difficult one is the prelude. And what Miss was saying to me is a brilliant one to compare to the prelude is Storm on Island. Storm on the Island. Storm on the Island. So you, if, if you compare these two poems, they both end in a very similar way, where the narrator um, kind of has, a kind of, I guess, leaves their perspective on nature right at the end. Their perspective changes. Um, so these are two brilliant poems. Uh, I'm going to draw a little connection there. Those are two brilliant poems to connect. I'm trying to think what else... Power of nature. Hmm. Let me go have a look. I honestly... Oh, exposure's a good one. Exposure is the one that I think we all bloody know. The um, ice, you know, freezing uh, during the war. How nature is perceived to be more deadly than war. I would say the prelude could also connect pretty well with exposure. In fact... I did a stream recently where I actually went through um, exposure. I, I actually talked about why exposure and the prelude were very similar in terms of they both perceive nature to be quite antagonistic. I'm trying to think what other poems. Um, maybe Poppy? No, Poppies isn't one. Let me go grab my anthology and we'll, we'll go have a little look through. Um, the emigre, I don't think, oh, kamikaze, that would be one, because it talks about how nature almost, nature almost compels a person to, you know, do things, even if it might not be considered the, the right choice. Checking out my history, nope. Tissue, no. I mean, maybe, but tissue's shit. Uh, it, it's a decent poem, but, like, ugh, horrible. Uh, bayonet charge? Possibly? I don't think. My Last Duchess? No. Prelude? No. Ozymandias is the only one that I would say you might be able to talk about. Maybe you could say nature is quite compelling in terms of how it changes people's perspective, but no. I I would not talk about those. So those, those are the four main ones. <clears throat> so if you guys can at least even think of a couple of quotes. Uh, oh, I rubbed out the wrong thing there, sorry. If you guys can at least pick out a couple of quotes from each of these and the general idea, you should be good. Now, let's break each one of these down. And I'm going to draw a table here. So we're going to do prelude first. Storm on the island. Uh, what else have we got? Exposure. And what was the last one? Literally, I can't even really remember. Um... Oh, of course, Kamikaze. <laughs> Kamikaze. Uh, so, what do the poems have in common, right? Because if you're comparing the similarities and differences, first of all, let's compare them based on power of nature. So let's say the exam says, um, how does the prelude and one of a poem of your choice um, have the power of nature. Let's discuss it. So, at least in my opinion, I think the prelude is a weird one, but a good one. 
The power of nature is expressed in the prelude as at first it's presented as beautiful. It's presented as almost fragile, delicate. But then we have a switch where about halfway through the poem, nature becomes terrifying because it is un-man. It is not a person. It is an unliving object which will persist forever. Um, so it's actually quite a fearful thing. It is something that is not understood. Um, so, Storm on the Island, how is that presented? I might go take another look through it, but as far as I can tell, Storm on the Island is meant to be a poem where it's also a social commentary on, um, like, Ireland. But uh, to begin with, nature is presented as quite violent, uh, but it is something that they can overcome. Right? They can overcome the violent nature. However, at the end, they realise that no matter what they do, Nature will always succeed in that sense, and that nature is more powerful than man. And all you, all you can do, really, is live with nature. All you can do is, is live with the danger, in a way. They have to kind of embrace it. Now, exposure presents it as a very antagonistic thing. It presents it as more dangerous than man. It presents it as more dangerous than man. And it is shown to be violent and almost sadistic in the way that it almost kills people. And finally, Kamikaze presents it as beautiful and compelling. Now, let's go break down each and every single point. Number one, what poems present nature as beautiful? Well, the prelude and Karakazu. Which, po which poems present nature as violent? That one. That one. Uh, Storm on the Island and Exposure. What poems present nature to be more dangerous than people? <clears throat> Exposure, Storm of the Island, Prelude. What poem? Oh, we've done it. There you go. Those were the connections. You, you guys, you guys, see this? Both the Prelude and Kamikaze present nature to be beautiful, compelling, inspiring, f a fragile system. Storm of the Island and Exposure present nature to be. Dangerous, violent, um, and finally, um, prelude, storm on the island, and exposure all present nature to be more powerful than humanity. Something dangerous, not understood. So there you go. That is the power of nature right there. Nature, nature is beautiful in its power. It is also not understood. It is more powerful than man, and it is violent. That would be the point that I would try and hit in the essay. So if the question says, okay, how does Storm on the Island and one of a poem of your choice present nature to be, present nature to be um, powerful, you have a lot of options to pick from. You could say, both poems present nature to be beautiful, however, both also present it to be... No, 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 it's not beautiful, sorry. Both poems present nature to be dangerous, more powerful than men, something that cannot be controlled. Bada, bada, bada. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. We're 15 minutes in, and I've, I've just um, basically given you guys a bit of a cheat code there to what will most likely be in our exam. 
My heart is gonna sink if it's Tissue or Emma Gray because I hear both of those poems. Uh, War Photographer, I've never gone through actually, so I don't like it. Um, I mean, th there's some good quotes in Photographer actually, but let let's actually go quickly through all the poems that I've just talked about. Let's pick out some quotes for each one quickly. Because you guys need to know quotes. So, we'll do Kamikaze. Oh man, it's so annoying that my white ball pens are actually beginning to die. I'm gonna need to buy some new ones very soon. Um, oh man, okay. So like I was saying, Kamikaze, let's pick three quotes from this. Um, okay, we could say... Um, Strung out like bunting on a green-blue translucent sea. Now this presents nature to almost be, I mean, bunting is obviously something that humans built, you know, something that is used to celebrate things, that is used to mark, I, I guess, happiness, pride. So the fact that it is being likened to, uh, the fact that boats, nature is being likened to something uh, which connotes happiness and positivity, shows that nature in this poem is being presented as something quite powerful. Um, uh, flashing silver as their belly swivel to what I'm not gonna write them now, I'll, I'll just talk about it. Um, I put peaceful, happy connotations, contrasts for war. He is leaving behind this world of happiness and wholesomeness. Um, bunting symbolizes celebrations, which of course contrasts death, uh, and it is a noun. Um, you have, uh, silver as their bellies. Silver, uh, connotes obviously beauty, again reinforcing the idea of beauty, but also it echoes war because, um, silver bullets and also, swivel towards the sun almost implies a bit of uncontrollability. So nature is being presented as beautiful here, but it's also being shown to almost mirror the war. You know, of course, a peaceful way. A complete opposite to the war. Um, the quote here, Yes, grandfather's boat, safe to the shore, salt sudden awash. Syllabans creates the sound of peace here. Um, the fact that the pilot is safe, um, oh, sorry, the, the saying safe here juxtaposes the pilot's current situation. The pilot is not safe, he's in danger. Um, and the pilot's thought stream is interrupted here. When it says, yes, grandfather's boat, safe to the shore, salt sodden, which shows how nature is actually, um, nature is compelling him here. It's making him, it's almost interrupting his thoughts to make him think of, um, the past, which he's currently tainting by going on the mission. Anyways, that's all the English that I'm going to do, poems. Uh, I'm going to probably later do an essay response to one, or I'm gonna do a plan for, in fact, we'll do it together, we'll do it together. But before we do that, it's recap time. Ah, nice. Okay, recap time. Let's recap everything that we did yesterday, which was, 
I can't even remember. That's a maddest part. I can, I, I can barely remember. What? Oh! Electrolysis. Okay, let's go through electrolysis quickly. You have these, and if in the exam it pops up, we can remember the acronym PANC, positive anode, negative cathode. So we know that, of course, this is the anode, this electrode here, this is the cathode. And we know that if we use the acronym oil rig, oxidation is a loss and reduction is gain. So during electrolysis, um, actually, hang on. So metals are always positive, which means they are here, no metal here. Okay. So we could probably get an SA response right out of this, guys. Literally an SA response. Okay. What we could talk about is how obviously the non-metals will go to the anode, the metals will go to the cathode, um, the metals will hang on. Which one oxidizes and which one gains? I assume oxygen oxidize. Yeah, oxygen oxidize. Okay, that's a good one to remember. Oxygen oxidizes. I believe it loses um, its negative electrons. Wait, so wouldn't it gain? Let me check. That is something that I do not know, and I don't want to be spreading misinformation to you guys. Let me go quickly check. Um, uh, reduction happens at the negative cathode. Oxidation happens when negative ions lose. Okay. Reduction at the negative, oxidation at the positive. So oxidation happens here. And reduction happens here. Okay, we can now, we can now do an SA response out of this then. So we could say that number one, um, the circuit is completed or the circuit, um, what would be a good term for this? I guess an electrical charge is both both electrodes are um, electrically charged. Um, this makes the positive anode. Um, well, this sorry, it has to be in a molten a molten or aqueous solution. In fact, we'll, we'll just write bullet points. We won't do an SA response today. It has to be in a molten or aqueous solution. Um, and it breaks apart. Break down the ions. Break down the ionic lattice. Because remember, we made that joke about Luke Kelly. So it breaks down the ionic lattice. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that we need to know here? If you get asked in the exam why these in particular, the electrodes, um, oh, it only works for ionic compounds. If we get asked in the exam, why do these, um, why do anodes need to be replaced constantly? It's because oxidation reaction will react with the graphite, creating carbon dioxide, slowly burning it away, or reacting with it. And I think that's it. That is electrolysis in a nutshell, guys. If you do, do not understand electrolysis, you could be missing up to 10 to 15 marks in your chemistry paper here. I mean, you think, the only time electrolysis will come up, I think, is if there's a whole section dedicated to it. What, there's 12 sections in a chemistry paper, um, which means 
That's what, maybe... 17, 16 marks per each section, possibly. So you could be missing out on 16 marks just by ignoring my streams, guys. That is, that is evil. That is so evil. And yeah, it's, it's the way it works. So then crystallization, we went through two days ago. Um, I'm not going to write it up or anything because I, I think every, we, we all know that by now. Um, basically, the step-by-step -step instruction on how to do it, where you would get your sulfuric acid, you would heat it, you would then add some magnesium oxide, then uh, repeat until you have excess or until only magnesium oxide is remaining. Um, and then after that, you would filter it. Uh, evaporate it um, in order for it to begin crystallizing and then crystallize it and then you would pat down the crystals um, and yeah oh is someone in chat <laughs> kid named electrolysis we always just done electrolysis man it, it was it was evil oh um do you remember me I were well, you were oh my god I do remember you Oh, that has brought back so many memories. Wait, the one where, um, from, from the Fortnite streams? Or am I thinking about a different scar? I remember me, me and Luke made that, made that meme ages ago. Because I think one of your friends or something, we like, I, 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 I don't know, I think we trolled him or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, like, this was years ago, I think in the primal season of Fortnite or something. Um, yeah, and I think I think we trolled him in the Flores Lava map or something. Because I remember he, he got really mad at us for, for some reason. <laughs> yeah, tw wait, 2020? Jesus Christ. Actually, wait, it, it can't have been, because I, I only did Fortnite streams, giveaway streams back in... Um, back in 2021 and 2022. Because the FNAF stream blew up, I think, January, January 2021. I did Fall Guys streams until the end of lockdown. So that must have been summer 2021 or summer. But yeah, we're, we're doing a, a, a GCSE revision uh, thing here, basically. Um, yeah. Basically, um... GCSE revision because the exams are in 17 days. So I'm doing these streams to not only help other people, but to, to help myself. So let me go to, I mean, the neutralization reaction. Oh, I done it wrong. Oh my God. That's an aqueous form plus H minus. And that gives you H to a liquid. Just remember, obviously, water's chemical compound is H to O. So that is two hydrogen, one oxygen, and that balances out. I I think I think the neutralization reaction is quite good to be fair. And then what what else do we do? Oh, mitosis. We we went through mitosis. Uh, bro really thinks he's P. McCutton. Bro, I wish, I wish I had that, that slick beard. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, we went through mitosis, and I honestly, I hate mitosis, because we never went through it with bloody Miss Collinson. And Mr. Mr. Hooper did his best to explain it, but I don't remember shit. So this is going to be my roughest guess here. I think the chromosomes divide. Or chromosomes replicate, nuclear membrane breaks down. Because remember, when I get a message from Luke Kelly, I break down. Uh, that, that is an iconic meme now. Uh, the nuclear membrane breaks down, they line up in the center, in the center of the cell. Um, one goes to either side, so one pair goes to each side. 
one pound for each side. Um, the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm divides, and you are left with two identical cells. Someone will have to verify whether that's right or not because that is the explanation that I, I found on BBC Bite Size. I don't know which, do, do any of you know which one is spindle fibers? Is that, um, is that meiosis or is that also mitosis? And am I, am I missing out on something there? I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna go grab my box of stuff here. So we, for, for context there, we just went through English and we've just done a recap of the things that we did yesterday. Now, let's go do some new stuff because, and then we'll go back to English right at the end of the lesson. Uh, so remember guys, I, I do these streams, I do them for an hour and a half each day. Um, and my whole goal is to not only help myself revise, but to help you guys revise. I could be doing actual exam questions or important things like that, but I'm spending my own time trying to help you guys here um, as much as I need the help as well. So because of that, feel free to join in one of the next ones, guys. That would be sick. If we could get as many people in these as possible, that would be good. All right, you know what? How, I have the chemistry book here, but actually I'm going to do biology instead because I am literally taking GCSE biology, aren't I? Okay. But a bop bop bop. Label the cell membrane, uh, cytoplasm and nucleus on figure one. Jesus Christ. Give the function of each part of the cell. Okay, well obviously the nucleus contains the DNA, but it also controls the cell. The cytoplasm is where all of the chemical reactions occur, and the cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. <laughs> I, I well, that was on it. Oh, if that comes up in my eggs. <laughs> Name two of the subcellular structures that can be found in the animal cell: ribosomes and mitochondria. Give one reason why the diagram in figure one does not represent a plant cell. It does not contain chloroplast, it does not control a cell wall, it, it does not contain a uh, vacuole. Or I guess you can literally just say it does not contain plant cell specific organelles. We're going through everything here guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start until I hit something to which of the following is a prokaryotic cell? Root hair, sperm, nerve cell, or bacterium? It's obviously a bacterium because a prokaryotic. Uh, name structures X, Y, and Z on figure two. I, d I don't know if it's a bacteria, guys. I don't know this one because Mr. Hooper has not gone through it with us. I think that thing on the outside is the cell wall. I assume X in the middle is just the DNA, like a strand of DNA. And I assume that figure Z is maybe ribosomes? I don't have the book, the actual guidebook. I only have the exam books, I think. So can, can one of you guys confirm that for me? If I, if I did that right? In fact, hang on, oh, I think I have a book. It's all effed up like, it's literally torn in half here. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Uh, okay, I don't care, give me, just tell me the stuff, Jesus. Cells, it is called, okay, plasmids. They are what they were called, plasmids. Plasmids are small rings of DNA. And, yep, I was right with that little strandly bit in the middle. That is a singular strand of DNA. And everything else there I knew. Cell wall, cell membrane, okay. That was the first question which properly stuck me, mainly because we haven't been taught it. Okay, let's continue. Which of the following is true for 
Structure Z. Um, it contains genetic material. Obviously. Um, look at the scale of figure 2. A eukaryotic cell measures 10 um long. How many times larger is that in the figure 2? 10 times? Isn't that literally just 10 times 1? The head of a pin is 1 millimeter in diameter. How many pro bro, what are these questions? This would not come up in an exam. Give one difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic don't have a nuclei, eukaryotic do. Oh, microscope questions. I mean, guys, it's literally just this. Image actual magnification. If you don't know that, you're dim. That's a joke. We'll just skip microscope. Okay, here. A student wants to use a light microscope. Oh, I have a light microscope. Uh, <laughs> which statement best describes when a stain might be used? Um, well, from my experience, I haven't used any stains to look at microscope stuff. Um, because I can't see, I literally, without stains, you can't see shit. You literally cannot see shit. I, I got like some pond water, I couldn't see a thing. You need, you need the stains. It is, it's literally basic math. Uh, I don't get the point of magnification. I mean, I guess it's for looking at cells, isn't it, right? Like, I mean, I have a microscope. It's I look at cells, but like it's it's weird, but it's in the exam. But do think about it this way: if you get a whole section or even one or two questions on magnification, that could be like four marks for absolute free. If it's a question where it requires like multiple, it, it, I I know for a fact. I think anyways, if a question requires you to get a ruler and measure, but it's another extra mark, so you could get up to five marks for doing basic math. And you get a calculator, so it's not even like you gotta like struggle here. So yeah, easy. Um, I think the only forms of biology a standard form, tangent, tangent lines. I always forget to do tangent lines in every subject. So I need to focus on that. Um, at least in compliant. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right there. Conversions probably too. Like, going from, like, 10 meters to whatever it is in centimeters, is it, I, I think I'm doing this right. Um, yeah, I think conversions, if, if you get a question, Mr. Riley said this at least for physics, if you get, like, a five-mark question, um, and it's just math-based, nothing else, you will likely have to do two formulas. So remember that. Uh, obviously, I don't think that'll pop up in biology, but anyways, let, let's just keep going with this. Let, let's keep let's let's keep going until we find something that's actually tough here. Um, so you want to use a stain when the specimen is colorless. Basically, from my experience, blood I can see all the cells in it because blood is colored red. But if I'm looking at pond water. You know, I'm not going to see shit. Uh, the three different objective lenses are labelled. Um, which lens should the student first select when viewing her cells? Four times, ten times, or forty times? Obviously, it's four times. Start off at the smallest possible magnification, and then go down until the highest. M me, at least, I don't do that. I start off on the second highest, because otherwise you can't really see much. Uh, after she has selected the objective lens, she looks down um, the eyepiece and uses the adjustment knobs. Describe the purpose of the adjustment knobs. Shit, I have a microscope and I don't know this. I think it's just for making the focus. Right? Isn't that literally what it is? Adjusting the focus of the, the object? Because I know I have at least... I, I have only one knob on my microscope, and normally it's so blurry you can't see shit, but then if you crank it a little, it's like such high quality. So I'm assuming that's what that is. In fact, let, let's, I have a mark scheme here with me. I do, do I? 
Uh, yep, I do. All right, let's let's have a look at what the maximum says. Um, a tangent line, and a tangent lines from yes, and that is the the definition. <laughs> so basically, in a graph, if it's like you know, you get like that, and then it's that point here that you're wanting to look at. You you would draw one. I'm not sure. It, it's to get the gradient. In science, you get the gradient. So you like pick two good points, change your y over change your x to get the gradient. That's normally what you would do, at least. Come on, stay down. Okay, my book is just not staying down here. This is actually pissing. The pissing. This is actually pissing me off. Right, let's have a look at uh, the question. Bada bop bop bop. Um, they bring, okay, the correct answer there, you know how I said focus, the correct answer was they bring the sample into focus by moving the stage up and down. I kind of already knew that, I just didn't explain it too well. So that's a good one. The adjustment knobs um, adjust the focus by moving the stage up and down. Remember on a microscope, the stage is like, I don't know, I, I can't really draw microscopes, but if, it, that's the stage, okay. Um, uh, Def know what tangent line is. I'm dumb for not knowing about it because in Islam, oh, oh yeah, that's all good, dude. I, I literally just thought you, um, like, uh, you just finged it. Anyways, carry on. Um, I'll carry on. So I already know all the microscopy stuff. The student wants to see the cells at a greater magnification. Uh, what? Like, literally just... Adjust the objective lens to a higher magnification, and if not, if you don't have one which is that, either change the actual lens, like the actual viewing, uh, change the actual eyepiece to something with a higher magnification, or buy yourself a better microscope. The student wants to uh, okay. After she has viewed the cells, she wants to produce a scientific drawing of them. Her teacher has advised her to use clear, unbroken lines. Give to her where she can ensure she produces an accurate and useful drawing. I don't know. Make it accurate? I don't know. That's a weird question. But I've actually seen that appear like four times in the exam. So let me get the exam response here. Um, okay, oh, Jesus, these are the most generic answers, but they work. Make sure your drawing takes up at least half of the space available. Do not colour or shade the diagram. Use a sharp pencil with a fine point. Jesus Christ. Least difficult exam question. Label the important... Okay, so literally just label. Literally just... Number one, label. Number two, sharp pencil. That will literally get you it. Oh my god. Wow. I overcomplicate everything. God damn it. Okay. Uh, next, xylems. Okay, this is a cell differentiation. We have barely done plant cells with our current teacher, so this is actually going to be tough. Um, root hair cells. Uh, long finger-like projection uh, to increase the surface area for absorption of water. Fulham is for food, right? So that would be very few subcellular structures and holes in the end cell walls allow dissolved sugars to move from one cell to the next. And xylem is cells with a hollow in the center and have no cell walls to form a continuous tube for transporting water. So in other words, xylem and phloem 
Phollum is for like sugars and foods. Xylem is water. Um, as an organism develops, some of its cells develop into different structures um, and change into different types of cells. What is the process called? Differentiation or special specialization? Shit. I assume it's specialization. A different, okay, I was wrong. It's differentiation, okay. Special, I, ah, oh, isn't that from bone marrow? Uh, stem cells, maybe? I don't know, that might be a completely different term for something else. Let's carry on. Sperm cells are specialized to help achieve their function. What is a function to fertilize the egg? Explain how the structure helps it achieve its function. I mean, this is just basic. The long tail allows it to swim fast. Uh, the enzyme, the head contains enzymes, etc., etc. Okay, let's look at this. The stages of, oh, here we go. The cell cycle. Oh, sh okay, okay, hang on, hang on. You remember a couple of minutes ago, guys, how I was on about mitosis, and I was on about how the nucleus, no, no, no. So stage two, nuclear membrane breaks down. Stage three, chromosomes line up in the middle. Okay, step four is, I believe, spindle fibers pull chromosomes to each end of a cell. So they start off in the middle, but then they are pulled to the opposite ends. Like so. So spindle fibers, that's what I was on about before when I was asking about spindle fibers. Name the chemical molecule that chromosomes are made up of protein? It is protein, right? Oh, DNA. Shit, I went too deep. <laughs> DNA codes for proteins. God damn it. I went a step to wrong subject, kind of. Bollocks. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, so chromosomes are made up of DNA, okay. Cell A is preparing to divide. What is happening to the cell? Um, the chromosomes are doubling. Describe what is happening in D. Um, the cell wall slash cell membrane and the cytoplasm are dividing. How do two cells produce at stage E compare to cell A. Um, they are genetically identical. Okay, this is just plotting a graph. I'm sure this will be very fun. Bro, four marks, five marks for this. Wow. A type of bacteria was found to have a mean division time of 45 minutes at 20 degrees Celsius. If one of us bacteria was given the same conditions. Okay, so let, literally 45 minutes. So surely it would divide 20 times. So you would do one times two to the power of 20, I believe. Or maybe it's two to the power of 19, since you can't actually multiply one by anything without getting one. Um, I, I'm going to assume that was right. Let me have a look. Oh, okay. Oh, no. No, okay. Yeah. It was 12 divisions. I, I forgot that because... Okay, 9... No, okay. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I overthink everything in bloody science. Um, 9 hours, which you would do 9 times 60 to get 540 minutes. Then you would divide that by 45 to get 12 divisions. So you would do... 2 to the power of 12. Oh, it is 2 to the power of 12. God damn it. You wouldn't take one off. That was my mistake. 
Um, a student was investigating the effect of a different concentration of an antiseptic on the growth of bacteria. The student prepared uncontaminated cultures of the bacteria on agar plates. Uh, why is it important that the cultures were not contaminated? Because if they were contaminated, it could lead to infection. You don't want the, the, uh, it to spread, do you? I'm assuming that would be the answer. Uh, unwanted microorganisms may be... Oh, okay, no, okay. I, I thought it meant at the end there, no. Uh, unwanted microorganisms may have affected the results of the experiment. Contam oh, contamination could result in the growth of pathogens, okay. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna do. I just did some very generic basic biology stuff there. And I actually found one or two important, important bits of info there. One useful bit for mitosis. I'm gonna turn off chat so it doesn't block the camera here. Now, I'm gonna head off in just nine minutes. So before we go, let's go plan an, uh, an essay. A, com a poetry comparison for, I guess we should do prelude and storm on island, storm on the island. I'm writing very fast now, um, because we've, we've just kind of explained how they are very similar in a lot of good ways. So let me go look through both poems. I'll pick out some quotes and then I'll go for, and then I'll kind of wrap things up. So the prelude, um, a good, a good one here. Is, so for the prelude, you, you, your first point should be that, um, oh, no, hang on. No, no, no. Um. I can't actually choose that point because that wouldn't apply for the Storm on the Island. Okay, Storm on the Island presents nature to begin with as something that can be controlled. So if I find a point here, um, okay, here's a good one. Proud of her skill to reach a chosen point. Because what that means, basically, in nonsense terms, is that humanity is wanting to just constantly challenge themselves. Um, and as a result, they, they, they basically use nature as a tool or an object. To them, nature doesn't have any feelings, it doesn't have any emotion. It is just kind of a, a, a tool or an object. Um, he does not care about the natural world. And I believe there's a similar quote in Storm on the Island. If I go about them now. We are prepared, we build our houses squat. Um, this wizened earth has never troubled us. So what you could talk about there is how this quote here basically implies that humanity doesn't really care for nature to the point where you know, they, they, it doesn't bother them, they don't bother it in a way. You, you could point out how wizened or wizened, I, I don't know how you would pronounce that. Uh, you could talk about how that basically, I mean, it's an object, adjective uh, and it obviously implies wisdom, but it also personifies the earth and it makes the, old, the earth seem old, wise, um, but the fact that they are prepared and well equipped basically means that, again, they don't really care about nature. Na they view nature more as just an annoyance, in a way. The fact that they are prepared for us, the fact that they personify it to almost make it seem harmless, by saying it's never troubled us, makes it seem harmless. Harmless. And proud of his skill to reach a chosen point means that nature here is being personified as just a tool, an object which again is harmless. So that's, that should be your first point, I, I would say. Your first point should be both poems 
um, are able to firstly present nature to be um, a tool or an object, something which doesn't really do much. But then you want to you wanna talk about how um, nature has been proven to be dangerous. Storm on the island, there is a good quote here, uh, when it blows full blast, And I did that on purpose there because that's an enjambment, or however you pronounce it, basically where it carries on to the next line. And you can literally talk about how this means that the storm is out of control, but it's carrying on to the next line. Uh, alliteration of B helps reinforce the idea that it's out of control. The word blast literally gives connotations of a war. It gives war imagery. So now nature is being presented as violent, dangerous, but also similar to man in the sense that, you know, humans also cause war, conflict. But then, ironically, or not ironically, strangely enough, the prelude does not do this. The prelude still continues to talk about nature being beautiful. But then, um, a huge peak, black and huge... Oh, well, what's a better one for that, actually? Oh, growing in still stature, the grim shape. That is a good one. Grim, obviously, I, I won't write it now. You guys can just listen. Grim, obviously, connotes death. Uh, the grim shape. What, what else is it, sir? Uh, growing still in stature. Stature, obviously, imposing, almost like it's there on purpose. It's quite aggressive in, it, in its mannerisms. It's intimidating and it's scary, which almost links it here. But the thing is here, it's not really being compared to a man or a person. It's being compared to something above that, something with way more power than a human. And finally, a good quote from the prelude is, um, Which one is it? Um, huge and mighty forms that do not live like living men. So there, it is literally saying, no, actually nature is completely different to a person. It's more powerful. They are huge. They are stronger. They are, they are terrifying. And then Storm on the Island um, says here... Um, Space is a slaver. We are bombarded by the empty air. It is a huge nothing that we fear. And that literally almost is like, in this sense, he's living, he, he's living alongside nature. Nobody wins at the end of the day. It reflects the truth about our current society. Um, and it's a cyclical structure. So both poems right at the end have different perspectives on nature, but it kind of in the same tone, I guess. Because the prelude talks about nature being far stronger than a person and far more imposing. Uh, but Storm on the Island literally refers to nature kind of almost being like something that they now just have to live with. So there you go. I'm going to quickly open up the chat now. Uh, hi, I'm back watching another... Oh, right, right, right. Uh, this is the second... Not the second channel. This is the main channel. Uh, I, I believe you, you were... Um, on GMC streams. So on this channel, I don't stream. In, uh, I actually quit GMC streams a couple of months ago. Um, but I'm only doing these streams because of obviously exams that are coming up soon. Um, so I need to obviously be ready for them, which is why I'm doing these streams to, to help myself and other people. Uh, but also, um, GMC Arts is on temporary break until uh, I think July. Um, in July, I'll be back uploading uh, weekly videos. So anyways, there you go, guys. That was kind of an essay response that I just kind of rambled through. Hopefully, again, you picked out something useful there. Because just remember that we are we are literally um, 320ths the way there now. 15% to getting into exams, really. And I, I say that, but I mean... 
Um, I think there's a, a couple more days, but I'm only on about school days here. Um, so yeah, we have just hit an hour runtime as well. That's that's a correct great place to end. So remember, today we went through the English power and conflict. I'm just gonna write these up in case anyone wants to think that we we also just went through some basic biology there, but also mitosis which will likely come up in the exam. It, it's come up in like three out of five of my mocks, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's at least two questions on it. Uh, and then we also just did a review of chemistry slash electrolysis. Um, so that is literally it for today. Um, I mean, unless any of you guys want me to quickly go through... Actually, there was one thing that I was going to go through in terms of math. But we did today. But for that, I may need to go check my computer to get the question up. So if you guys give me a minute, because this question has really annoyed me. It is so weird that it's a complete the square question. But there was also another one, a, a weird like algebra one that I did not like at all. See, I don't mind complete the square. Now, I love factorizing, but if it, it, when it gets any harder, like double complete the square, that's when you know shit's wrong. But these are like grade nine questions anyways, so I don't really need to focus on them, I don't think. So here you go. More is it? Can't even find the question. Oh, here. Okay. No, what the hell is it? Hello? Here, here. This is an actual vile question. Six marks though. And honestly, I, th I think if, if you really, oh, I don't know why my board's just doing that. My chair, sorry, I'll put it back. It is X under for take away two X, um, X is that plus two? X plus two equals one. And I think all you really have to do is just do some bloody basic math, but it is just worded so weird. Where's my other pen going? I want to see if I can... My pens are running out so fast. I need a... Do I have any better pens with this? Uh, I have a purple pen. Purple guy? Okay. So, I think, first of all, you need to find a common denominator between these two. I'll make a common denominator, sorry. So you would multiply this by x plus 2. You'd multiply this by 4. Because notice how they're both literally just missing each other. Um, so look, so if you multiply that by 4, you get 4 x plus 2, I believe. And that you would also get 4x plus 2. So you've made them both the same. You've made them both the same. And then, because I've multiplied this one by x plus 2, you would get x squared plus 2. No, hang on, no you wouldn't. I've missed a huge step there. You get x, in brackets, x plus 2. And then for this one, you would get 8x. Right? Maybe. Let's just go with it and see what we go. Now, what you could do now is you could actually, I think, cancel one of these out. But first, we, I guess we would expand. So we would get x squared plus x minus 8x. And then on this side, we could literally just do x plus 2. So there. We're now left with this somewhat okay equation, I think. We would multiply... Ah, uh, would you? Would you multiply by 4x plus 2? I mean, let's expand this out. That would be 4x plus 8. 
So what would we do? X minus X, wouldn't that be? I don't know, hang on. I, I, this is as far as I, I would probably go in an exam here. I'm not sure what the next step would be. Um, even though you, yeah, I mean, it is, um, oh, right, goodbye, goodbye, um, I mean, you have to put it in the quadratic formula, okay, x squared plus x minus 8x, will that not just be minus 9x, let's give it a go, 4x plus 8 and then maybe if you multiply maybe 4x plus 8 so you, you would get what's 4x times x squared? This is not right because that, would, that wouldn't get you quadratic for bollocks. Okay, I've done something wrong but we got up to this step here I think. Let me go on Google and see what Google does. Because if, if, if Google does something similar to me, I can carry on from there. So it's x minus 4 divided... No, x minus 2x 2x minus divided by x plus 2 equals 1. All right. So you would find a common denominator. Okay, Google has done something completely different. No, they have done this the wrong way. Okay. Okay, the equation will be multiplied by 4. These are the denominators. Multiplying by uh, expanding gives us that's 2x. Equating to 0 and collecting like terms. Equating to the 0. See, I wouldn't know where to go. I wouldn't know how to do that because I don't. It, it's this is the most vague question, the most vague explanation. Um, like, would would you just literally just minus one or what? I don't know. That's where I would get thing at, and that's probably only like quadratic formula is so fucking easy too. Like that, that would probably be what I did there would be worth like. Free. If it's a six mark question, that would definitely I would get three marks for that, which three out of one hundred and sixty isn't that much. But like that's two percent of a GCSE basically. I could get up to four percent though, which is what would really annoy me. Let me try that again. Oh my my computer's about to die, so it doesn't even matter. I think I'm going to end the stream now, or I'll just do this one more time. x over 4 minus 2x over x minus 2 equals 1. So, yeah, what I did the first time was right. So you would get yourself, oh, this is the annoying bit. Multiply that by 4, so you get 8x. Multiply that by 4, you would get 4 x minus 2. Multiply that by x minus 2 and you would get x, x minus 2. Multiply that by x minus 2 and you would get 4, x minus 2. Okay. So then what does our dumbass guide say? <laughs> Expanding gives us equating to zero and collecting like terms. So how would we expand this? Well, you would do x squared minus 2x, 8x, 
for x minus s. So actually, I, I just realized you can collect some like terms here, right? Minus 2, so that would be minus 2, my, oh, but the minus symbol there, wouldn't it be? So that would get you minus 10x, x squared minus 10x, over 4x minus 8. I don't know what you would do from there. No, fuck, feck. No. No, I think I did shit. Two X minus, so that would be a plus two X. Which we get you six. Hmm. I, I don't know where you would go from that. But anyways, that's all I'm going to do. So, yeah.